hello everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well so guys in this video we are going to solve some actual aptitude questions that are asked on 12th feb for gen c aptitude assessment which is a round first okay so make sure to watch the video till complete and if you are also practicing for aptitude assessment this video is going to be helpful because you will get a knowledge of how the questions are getting asked in these days in the examination so before we move on to the questions if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet because i regularly upload these kinds of helpful videos for all of you also there is a complete cognizant preparation playlist on my channel make sure to check that we have already solved a lot of questions and lot of previous year questions in the videos if you haven't checked it make sure to check that too also i am going to solve these questions which are asked in cognizant uh, gen c on aptitude assessment so one by one we will be solving these questions now let's just start with the first question let's look at this question how can we solve this? The question is Jason rows a boat at 13 km per hour in still water. If the river is running at 3 km per hour and it takes him to row to a place and back in 1 hour 30 minutes, how far is the place from him? Okay, the options are 120 by 13 km, 113 by 12 km, 132 by 13 km, and 120 by 7 kilometers. Let's see how can we solve this question. First of all, let us note down the data that is given to us. Okay. So initially what is given to us is speed of Jason in still water. Okay. So how much it is given? It is given as 13 km per hour. Right. If you see in uh, statement number one, Jason rows a boat at 13 km per hour in still water. This was the data given to us. Next data that is given to us is speed of river current. Okay. Current speed of river is three kilometers per hour so total time for round trip is given is what in the third sentence one hour and 30 minutes okay so these are the three data that is given to us and we need to find how far is the place from him okay so see uh, first of all based on this data what there are two speeds that we can deduce okay what are the two speeds first speed is speed while going okay which is also called as downstream right so that is how much 13 plus 3 kilometers which is going to be your 16 kilometers per hour and next is your speed while returning which is also called as upstream okay so speed while returning which is uh, 13 minus 3 which is going to be your 10 kilometers per hour okay Hope you have understood how we are calculated. So our uh, Jason speed in still water is 13 km per hour and speed of river current is 3 km per hour. So while going it will be added and while returning it will be subtracted. So we will have uh, these speeds. Okay. Now let us see the time calculations. So you know the value of distance, right? Distance speed is equals to what? Speed is equal to distance upon time. Using this formula only we can say time is equals to what? Distance upon speed okay now we do not have the speeds well values right uh, sorry not speed but we do not have the distance value so we will take it as d because d is the only thing that we have to calculate see uh, how far is the place from him so that is distance only so what we will write d upon s which will be our speed now speed what we will do we will sum both the speeds okay that is the downstream speed and the upstream speed so d upon 16 plus d upon uh, 10 which is going to be equals to how much it is given to us as 3 by 2 okay what is this 3 by 2 this 3 by 2 we will convert 1 hour 30 minutes to uh, fraction so it will be 3 by 2 okay 3 by 2 hours simply so now we will just solve this one okay so you can do it in any way you can take lcm you can like directly cross multiply anyhow so once you will solve it you will get 13 d divided by 80 is equals to 3 by 2 Okay, I am not solving it quickly. Otherwise, if you want to solve it, what you can do is this will multiply there 10 D plus this will multiply there 60 D and then this will both multiply below 160 and then this will be 3 by 2. Further, you will solve cross, uh, you will cut off the values which are extra, then you will get this as the final equation. Now, based on this equation, we are going to find the value of our uh, D. So, this 2 will multiply there, which is going to be 26 D and this 80 into 3 will be uh, 240. Okay now d will be what 240 divided by 26 which is going to be which is going to be one uh, if this if we will cancel this by 2 it will be 120 divided by 13 okay 
and distance is in kilometers so we will write kilometer let's see if we have that option yes option a is this one so the correct answer of this question is going to be option number a hope you have understood it let's move on now to the next question let's look at this question a pipe can fill a tank in 12 hours while a leak which is at one sixth at the height of the tank can empty up to the part in s hours if both are open simultaneously and initially the tank is full then what will be the one sixth full okay we have options as 9 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours and 12 hours. So how can we solve this question is first of all, let's understand the statement again. A pipe can fill a tank in 12 hours. Okay, this data is given. So based on this data, what we can write is filling rate is what? Filling rate is going to be 1 by 12 per hour, right? Uh, in 1 hour, it will be 1 by 12, right? Next is leak is at 1 sixth of the tank and can, can empty that part in s hours okay so what can we write in that case emptying rate okay emptying rate is going to be emptying rate is equals to 1 by s per hour okay again for one sixth of the tank okay for one by six of the tank and what we were told is initially the tank is full and both pipe and the leak are opened so we need to find when the tank will be one by six full okay so let's understand the leak effect. The leak effects only the bottom of one sixth of the tank, right? It is told when it will be one sixth full, which means it is only affecting the bottom one sixth of the tank. This means the leak empties the full tank at the rate of six by s per hour, right? Uh, leak empties the tank at a rate of six by s per hour, right? Now net drainage rate is what? Net drainage rate. Net drainage rate is filling rate minus emptying rate. Okay. So filling rate we have already found 1 by 12. Emptying rate is 6 by S, right? Because see, we have told, right? 1 by S per, uh, per hour for 1 sixth of the time. So, leak empties the tank at a rate of 6 by S per hour. Okay. So, that is why 6 by S. This is S. Okay. Don't get confused. Now, what we have to find is finding the time to reach 1 by 6 full. Okay. Because that is only what we have to find. So, that how we will calculate is the tank is st uh, starts full and must reach 1 by 6 full. Right. So, amount of water to be lost is 1 minus 1 by 6, which is going to be 5 by 6 of the tank. Okay, this much amount needs to be lost. Okay, which is 5 by 6 is what we will say T into 1 by 12 minus 6 by S, which is our net drainage rate. That is T into our net drainage rate. Okay, so we have found out right uh, how much of water needs to be drained out. So that is why we have formed this equation. And now when we will solve it, we will get the value as of T as 10 hours. Okay. I'm not solving it completely, but if you solve this equation, you will get the value as 10 hours. So the correct answer for this question is going to be option number C, that is 10 hours. I okay, hope you have understood it. Let's move on to the next question. Let's look at this question that we have. The question is the number of ways to divide eight students into two different groups of equal numbers to perform an experiment is okay. And we have the option is 140, 70, 60 and 120. So see the guys, this question is based on combinations. Okay combination so we have to find the number of ways to divide eight students in two different groups of equal numbers to perform an experiment okay so if you remember there is a formula that is n c r is equals to n factorial divided by r factorial into n minus r factorial okay we are going to use the same formula so in our case n value is what eight number of students are there and we have to uh, like Two different groups of equal numbers which means four four right so how many uh, combinations will form we will have to calculate that so eight factorial divided by four factorial into eight minus four factorial okay which is going to be eight factorial divided by four factorial into four factorial this can be written as eight seven six five okay and uh, into four factorial and this will be four factorial into four three two one this will get cancelled out and then further cancelling we can do so for example four twos are 
8 this can get cancelled 3 2s are 6 this can get cancelled so 2 5s are 10 into 7 which is going to be 70 the correct answer in this case is going to be option number b which is 70 hope you have understood it let's now move on to the next question let's look at this question what is the minimum value of the following expression on the x-axis we have the equation as 8a square plus 6a plus 4 and we have the different options that is given to us see before solving this question you should know one thing that a quadratic equation of this form that is ax square plus bx plus c becomes or reaches minimum at reaches minimum or maximum okay at what a is equals to minus b by 2a okay so this is like one general rule okay that you should know before solving this question now based on this what we will do we will uh, like solve our equation so see in our equation a is what a is 3 right a is sorry 8 this one right then b is 6 and then c is 4 right b is 6 and c is 4 now using this what we will do we will substitute these values in our uh, this one so a is equals to what minus 6 by 2 into 8 which is this one right which is equals to minus 6 by 16 which is further equals to minus 3 by 8 okay so like cancelling it out with 2 it will give us this much okay so we have got the value of a in this form now what we will do we will start solving our equation so see 8a square plus 6a plus 4 okay 8a which means 8 into 3 3 is a 9 and uh, 8 is a 64 okay basically i'm substituting this value in place of a plus 6 into uh, 6 into minus 3 by 8 plus 4 okay this will equals to how much 72 by 64 minus 18 by 8 plus 4 okay now we will further solve it by taking the lcm and all so it will be 9 by 8 first of all i'm cancelling this out okay so 9 by 8, uh, I'm cancelling it with 8. So 9 by 8 minus 18 by 8 plus 4. Okay, this will give us, uh, finally solving it completely will give us 23 by 8, okay, which is equals to 2.875. Okay, and if you convert it into mixed fractions, it will be minus 3 by 8. Okay, so the correct answer is going to be option number C e for this question. Hope you have understood it. Let's now move on to the next question. Let's look at this question that we have. The question is if P is to Q is equals to Q is to R is equals to 7 is to 13, then we have to find the ratio P is to Q is to R and we are given different options. We have to select the final answer from these given options. Let's try to solve this question. First of all, let's take the initial ratio that is given to us. P is to Q is equals to Q is to R is equals to 7 is to 13. Okay. Now, based on this, what we can write? Can we write this P is to Q is equals to 7 is to 13 and q is to r is equals to 7 is to 13 right we can absolutely write this now uh, what we will assume is our value of q let us consider that let q is equals to 7x okay based on this we have taken so q is having the ratio 7 so that is why we have assumed q is equals to 7x now what we will do we will uh, substitute the values basically from p is to q is equals to 7 is to 13 which is this first equation okay this one we are now what we are doing is we are substituting the value of p so p can be written as what p will uh, p can be written as uh, 7 by 13 q right because see i will tell you quickly if you have not understood p is to q is 7 is to 13 right which can also be written as p by q is 7 by 13 we are trying to find out p so p can be written as 7 by 13 q right so that is what we are just doing here so p is what 7 by 13 q and then what we will do we will substitute the value of q in this case which is going to be which we have assumed right 7x so this equation is going to give us as 49 by 13x okay this one this is the value of p we have got now again what we will do from equation second one which is q is to r is equals to 7 is to 13 okay what we are going to do is this time we are going to find out the value of r okay so r will be how much r will be uh, 13 by 7 and q okay so 13 by 7 into 7x this is going to cancel 7 and 7 we are going to get 13x 
we have found the uh, value of p in terms of x we have found the value of r in terms of x and we have also assumed the value of q in terms of x now let us substitute all these values so p is to q is to r what we can write uh, 49 x by 13 this is the p value which we have got next value is what uh, q which is 7x which we have assumed and r value that we have got is 13x now what we will do we will just simply multiply 13 with all the three values to simplify the equation further so 7x into 13 and 13x into 13 okay so here this will get cancelled out this will be 49x and then 13 into 7x will be 91x and then 13 into 13 will be 169x okay removing x from everywhere we will get the final ratio as 49 is to 91 is to 169 which is going to be our option number c that is why the correct answer for this question is option number c hope you have understood it so so guys we have solved enough questions now in this video i hope you found uh, those explanations helpful and if you did please share your reviews in the comment section okay so that i will get to know if you are liking these kinds of videos i will bring more such videos in future okay now is the time when you need to do two diy questions now diy stands for do it yourself now the answers of these questions i will not tell you you need to solve it by yourself and what you need to do is you need to write down the answers in the comment box how you will write it so we are going to have two diy questions you should have it in this way okay like one and two and then your option like for example if a is the option and then the option value okay in this way you need to write uh, your answers in the comment box let's read the two diy question the this is diy question number one the question is a shopkeeper gives a 20 percent discount on a shirt price at 500 what is the final price after the discount and we have the prices given to us as different options like uh, first option is 400 rupees then option b is 500 uh, 450 option c is 480 rupees and option d is 420 rupees so you need to find out what is the correct uh, price after discount okay let's move on to diy question number two so this is our diy question number two okay let's read this question if 2000 is invested at a simple interest rate of five percent per annum for three years what will be the total interest earned and we are given different options uh, that is 250 rupees 300 rupees 350 and 400 rupees so out of this you have to find out uh, calculate it and find out the final answer and let me know the answers in the comment box hope you will solve it if you have came so far in the video i would request you please spend like few more minutes and solve these questions and write it down in the comment box because this is your journey uh, for your learning don't consider that the others are commenting so why should i comment so be honest with your preparation i would say please comment down okay so guys that's all for today's videos hope you found it helpful if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section make sure to join me on telegram and you can even you know, follow me on instagram and ask your queries in the instagram dm as well and guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure to do so so that you don't miss any important updates from the channel so that's all for today's video thanks for watching the video